a lot of people know you as Kurt Jacobs, a linebacker, and that's it. Before we get into that side of you, what did it take to get to Penn State? You were a big recruit. I remember you coming up and being committed for a couple of years, like you said. Talk to us about the journey to get here, uh, as well as what it's taken now um, to be a leader on that football team. It honestly, it took a lot of work. Um, uh, honestly, we have our we have our core values, um, and I take sacrifice really serious. Um, I was the kid. I really wasn't trying to do too much outside of football. I was working consistently towards it a lot um, in high school. I probably spent four days a week training with my trainer back home, uh, Courtney. I haven't I haven't seen him in a while. Courtney Green. He um he used to play for the Jacksonville Jacksonville Jaguars. So I haven't I haven't seen him in a while. But just being able to work and get that consistent workflow, I feel like that trained me for like a college program. Yeah, I mean, dude. And when you come into Penn State, right? Early, early commit. What keeps you committed? Because obviously you yeah. had a lot of temptation, high rated recruit. All these schools coming in, they getting a peek at you, and you know as well as I do that recruiting process. Once you commit, get an offer. Guys yeah. are decommitting. Now schools are scavenging, trying to see if they can pick somebody off yeah, easy from another stop. class. Um, one thing that me, I just I always knew Penn State was gonna be it for me. Um, the way they they came after me and they just showed so much love. It just it felt like it felt like leaving your family really. So that's that's what I feel like is different about Penn State. Like when you're when when you see other guys decommitting, they're like. It's like they're decommitting from like the team, like they're doing that from from like the program. But I, I it really felt like if I would have left Penn State, it would have been like leaving family. Yeah, that's like what they do best in recruiting. I think yeah. is promoting that family atmosphere and getting guys bought in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, one thing, like, I, I used to have conversations with Jair Brown about this last year. Like, one thing about Coach Franklin, like, you will never catch him, like, slipping up in anything. Like, he <laughs> he is the most consistent and, like, real dude you ever meet in your life. Like, he will never, like, you'll never catch him saying something three weeks ago that he changed now or saying right. something even three years ago he changed now. He has a specific routine and he sticks to it every day. And that that's just the type of consistency I want in my life. That's just, I, When you're a leader like Coach Franklin, um, a high-paid leader, a leader with a lot of visibility, <laughs> yeah. um, not to pocket watch Coach Franklin by any means. No, we but are. We are. Right? <laughs> I, I am watching Shout out to Mike Porman. <laughs> yes. Top 170. I know how much doing you the make, man, Coach. Doing the man. I know how much you make, <laughs> That was Coach. not the point of what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> when you're that type of guy, you can't leave any room to be questioned. Like, when you're yeah. saying things, you have the team meeting format, you're in front of guys every day telling them how they need to live and what it takes to be great. So if you got any room in there for people to look at you and your body at work and say you're not yeah. living the way that you're talking, that's that's a big thing. Another question I had, you know, while we talk about your journey, the McDonough pipeline has been absolutely ridiculous for Penn State. State. They're, they're recruiting that really well. From you to P.J. Mustafer, who's with the Broncos now, deny Dennis Sutton, who a lot of football teams are going to want playing for him. I want Mason. Mason, Mason. Mason Robinson. I'm telling y'all right now, y'all better watch out for Mason Robinson. No problem. Hey, he might be one of the best ones. I'm really? not, I've seen I've seen how he grew since I was in since I was in high school. It's he's looking like Deny, like a lot like Deny. Really? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a that's a big Vaughn too, by the way. Yeah, Devon Lee. How do we forget Devon? You can't forget Devon. Pipeline. I can't forget Devon. What's Quick someone? Devon side story here. When he was a recruit, so I'm in the weight room lifting, and I heard Devon was committed. He was coming. I didn't know Devon. I had not even met the kid. Um, all I knew about him was he was like six foot, three ten, coming out of high school. I'm thinking he's gonna be a nose tackle. And me and PJ are talking about him, and he's like, "Yo, like this kid can like 180, like he can like windmill dunk, yeah. like he's like one of the most explosive, talented people Super I've ever athletic, met." Dude. Yeah, shout out Vaughn, man. Shout out Vaughn. Let's talk about the defense. Um, all offseason, expectations, obviously, for y'all have been super-duper high. Um, with the talent that comes back, you, Abdul, the corners, the D-line, uh, who people are starting to talk about now. But what they don't talk about is that you lose Jair Brown, who is a tremendous leader. P.J. Musfer is a multi-year captain at Penn State. As somebody who's looked to as a leader, what does it take for you to keep the defense's standards so high uh, and honestly even surpass last year's? The thing is uh... – with our defense, I feel like that leadership from guys like Jair and PJ, it just rubbed off on everybody. So we're just we're just to a point now where we have guys pretty much all across our ones and even our twos 
that just like we we hold each other accountable and that's how we operate as a defense. And I feel like it's just guys like Dom DeLuca, um, Jalen Reed, guys like Kevin Winston Jr., uh, yeah. Kalen King, just a bunch of guys that are willing to hold other teammates accountable at every position and anywhere on the field. It's just it, it gels together perfectly. You got Manny Diaz in year two. Um, before we get into who he is as a coach, I have heard through the grapevine that he is like probably the singular best motivational speaker mm -hmm. that has been in that building. And you guys have probably all heard him speak. It's different. It's team different, meetings. man. You just get the team meetings. Like you, if you were in our uh, our pregame, like pre breakfast speech, like we'll get a speech. Like say this game we play, like, it was eleven o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. We got to get up at 7.20, and I've never been, like, ready to run through a wall more <laughs> at 7.20 <laughs> at in, the in the morning. Like, just it, he motivates you, man. And he does it He does it through, like, saying, basically, you do this because you don't want to let your teammate down. And that's that's really how you feel as a as a football player. Like, mm -hmm. it it can't be about other outside, um, outside motivation tactics. It got to be from you and from your teammates. So. Yeah. I feel like that's the main thing he, he tries to get across. Would you guys all say that, you know, that, that accountability, that brotherhood, that, that focus on your, your brother and your teammate, would you say that's unanimous across the board? Yeah. Yeah, we, we literally we'll, – we'll do that stuff in film. Like, he'll show everyone – we're in the, the defensive meeting, like, setting. He'll show everyone everyone's best plays, and he'll show everyone everyone's worst plays. So, like, he – that's basically how you build trust as a defense. So – the pack basically knows what you are because you put it on tape. Man, that's just the beauty of ball, though. Yeah. I think that's why, I mean, not to just generalize, but specifically here for our team, why we're so close is we see each other's worst and yeah. each other's best, and yeah. we see each other grow. I swear. So it's, man, like, I know, like, when we put on, like, uh, before the team meet and see yourself on tape. I'm like, saying. And, <laughs> I'm saying. It'd the be effort the plays. The effort plays, man. And I, I got to shout out those D-Squad guys, too, man, because they – they will embarrass you sometimes. And it's, you wouldn't expect that. Like, you would expect to kill them every time. But, like, those guys, they they come out with a different type of passion and they come up mm. with a different type, of, uh, different type of work ethic. And it's just to get us better. And I, I really appreciate those guys for that. Shout out my D-Squad guys, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Shout out both your D-Squad guys. <laughs> like your I'm glad my legacy guys. has carried on in that D-Squad, man. We were just talking. We actually, yesterday... Had one of the most electric, dirty shows. Yeah, it was it was really? popping. It was popping yesterday. Yo, what, was, ma what made it so electric yesterday? Man, no, guys were flying around. Guys were <laughs> running guys, around here. Guys yeah. were in there trying to put people in caskets <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday night. Man, it was it was going down it. Sunday night. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta you gotta stop by, bro. They got they got the new uh, scoreboard or yeah, in Haluba. like the little oh in Haluba? Board. They got the yeah. they got the D Squad Super Bowl up there, the little symbol. They got oh, the crazy. The uh, the NFL music playing. It's, it's, a, it's a vibe. <laughs> that's good. I like that they are taking care of those guys. Some yeah. of the hardest hits I've ever seen in my life were oh my in D squad God. scrimmages. What was the hardest hit you ever taken? <sighs> um, first varsity football game, uh, my sophomore year. Liam Eichenberg, mm -hmm. who I think is with the Dolphins now. Okay. I had never. I didn't understand the concept of like poolers or like counters or any of that. I'm just in, I'm 15, just running around, run up field. Don't see him coming. Knock my helmet clean off. Ooh. Clean off, yeah. Can we get? I hope like we can cut to and get like an edit of that. Let me we can get we can get to those clips. Get, yeah, we get a clip. We'll right. get to those clips. <laughs>